Sorry, my dog wants to be a part of the shot. I'm trying to. Yeah, bring, bring him on. Bring him on. <laughs> the more the merrier. <laughs> How are y'all doing today? It's been a good day. Uh, yeah, it's been a great day. It's been a phenomenal day, an emotional day. I'm like, yeah. I've, I've been crying all day, just like watching the film and just spending time with everybody. It's just, it's been awesome. It's been really That's awesome. That's so great. Um, yeah. How was the screening? How did the audience enjoy everything? And what was that like to just be a part of that experience? Um, I would say it was amazing. 10 out of 10, you know, just like seeing all the hard work that everybody's put in over the past five years. And then, you know, seeing, you know, it was the countless, countless hours of footage that we shot over the past five years and yeah. seeing it like it come together in that hour and in, in 20, 30 minutes, hour and 20 minutes, mm -hmm. 88 minutes to be exact was just, wow. It was just awesome. And it yeah. just like, it just, it was such an amazing feeling. Like I said, I was crying during it. Like I was crying about like some stuff that I've seen before in the past, but how it was constructed and, and put it, put it together, just like really tugged on, tugged on my emotions. And just like, I'm just so happy. Like these certain individuals that came into my life, or the ones that were in, are in my life to tell my story. That's beautiful. And Johan, how did you feel about it? Could you introduce just for whoever will be watching this in the future, just introduce yourself and what your role and position was in the process? Yeah, so basically my name is Johan Stefansson and I've been working with Blake for almost seven years now. Mm -hmm. And I started just as a strength coach uh, under his uh, old manager mm -hmm. and when uh, that manager he passed away yeah. so mm -hmm. me and Blake we just stepped up together and we took the managing role together mm -hmm. so we are just managing him together yeah, uh, yeah. so I, I was his strength coach and you know through through the time we were always getting uh inquiries from people they wanted to do documentaries about him and things like that and it, it was it was just never right mm. it, it was supposed to be just thrown together and you you know how those things yeah. are and where they go you know yeah, yeah. and uh, so a little bit later in i i i started to think I, I know the right guy. Mm. I know the right guy to do that. So I went in to Anna's office with Blake and uh, it took about half an hour <laughs> to shake hands and walk out and start the process. That's amazing. That was actually going to be one of my first questions to you, Blake, was how did it feel to be introduced with the idea of telling your story um, like this? Um, you know, I, it was it was very interesting because, you know, I was working really hard on the track and in the weight room. Mm -hmm. And I knew the challenges that was set in front of me that was going to be really, really tough. And I know the power of of telling your story in the right way. Um, and like Johan said, we got a couple of people. We, we we had a few meetings with some um, with a few people that wanted to tell my story, you know, documentarians. And they mm -hmm. kind of like showed us and they had really, really great work. And and there was some really great individuals, but there was no connection there I can, yeah. I can tell that just we wasn't connected i would just been one story um to add to their to their catalog and to their reels and then when johan said i know a guy um he's really really good and, yeah. and he really really cares and, and at the position that me and johan was was in and still are like i trust i trust everything that johan does and everything he tells me that's why we have such a great team and so i i knew if whoever he brings in i could trust and, and bring them into my life just as much as I, I trust and bring Johan to my life. And so then we had the meeting with Anar and, and went into the offices. And like you said, after 30 minutes, we was laughing, we was joking and we was just, we was playing and it, and I could tell like his soul. Yeah. Like, I could feel his soul. I could feel his energy and the human being that he was. And and, and it's it's scary, you know what I mean? To, to, to give up your life you know, into in front of the camera. I mean, we followed some very personal things from, from my proposal to, to my to my daughter being born. And yeah. so I just knew I wanted somebody that I could trust to tell it in the right way. And and every corner and every step and from this five year journey, I just there was things I just knew that he was the right man for the job. 
and, and then like seeing it today and, and like seeing the crowd's reaction, you know, going up on stage and answering questions, it just, just solidify it just a little bit more, even more that this was the right man for the job. And, and it's what I love about it so much. It wasn't like we was looking for him and he wasn't looking for us. I feel like the universe, yeah. like God just like brought us together in the right moment, in the right time for to allow this amazing piece to be produced so that hopefully people can be inspired by it, be motivated by it and be moved yeah. by this. Yeah. And when it comes to the subject matter, um, when you were tackling this filming wise, how were you feeling once the ball started getting rolling with filming and actually being in front of the camera and having those intimate moments captured to be vulnerable like that with the team and I'm sure um, with your family as well? having to be a part of that experience yeah you know i me personally I, I love being in front of the camera i love like talking as you could tell um the you know but the you know there was times a hard part where I, I had to talk to my family members um who who don't like cameras um who 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 don't like to, to do interviews who does, you know my family's from tennessee they're from a small town in tennessee you know there was time we had to go to my church and i had to explain to them you know the the deacons of my church and to my pastor that I'm, I'm gonna be walking in with a, with a film crew and as, as scared as they was um or were you know they 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 believed in me and, and they supported me and they knew how this how important this was for me uh, to document this and and as more and as we dove into my story i started to realize how important it was to have this camera crew follow me day in and day out the good the bad and the ugly you know there was there was a moment you know we've talked about it where i would get a decision from the from the, the quarter sport or from the olympic committee of world athletics and as soon as they would send the decision right after the decision that didn't go in my favor they would send an embargo to where i couldn't mm -hmm. publicly speak about the decision i couldn't go to the media i couldn't go to the public and and so basically i couldn't even tell my side of the story until they release something. And once they release something, it caught fire. And as frustrated as that was, and as mad, I'm like, that's not fair. Like, I, I want to go tell my side. I want to get people on my side. But I knew I had one ace in the hole. Yeah. And that one ace in the hole was the team that was following me day in and day out, telling the truth. It wasn't just my side. It wasn't to make me look or feel good. It was just the truth. And, and what was really happening to me as a disabled man. And I wanted to be treated just like everybody else and, and the struggles that I was I'm, I was facing against a large committee who had an agenda. And, and I know this is me being born with that leg, trying to run an able-bodied event in, in, the, in the Olympic games. But how many times do we hear this story that, that, that somebody that, that, that's born less than, that doesn't have that many resources, that's going up against a big organization and, and, and us being told no and being denied on a daily basis. But I, I thank God that I, I, I was able to find the right people in my life to document this. So I finally get my chance to tell my side of the story. And, and knowing that and explaining that to my families and even though the, on those hard and uncomfortable moments of being vulnerable, I knew how important it was to be able to tell that side of the story because it, 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 it had to be told. Because somebody's going to hear this, somebody's going to watch this, and somebody's going to, to benefit from this. Right. I'm telling you, once Cher sent me the trailer, it, it was those two minutes for me where I was just like, I'm hooked. Because, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you are a very personable individual on screen, but I felt like I knew you. Yeah. Just because it just, it felt, um, I could connect in a way that I'm sure the audience was connecting and it didn't have to be about any specific kind of identity or category for me. It was, here is this individual wanting to tell their story because of their specific experience. And it does involve identities. It does involve all of these hard subjects that folks don't want to really touch up on or tackle because they're afraid to, but we have to look at it. Yes. When you were being... When you were telling this story, did you at any point think about the intersection of your identities 
playing into all of this, being a Black man with disabilities as an athlete. Um, did that ever influence how you just approached this or just felt about this entire experience? Um, honestly, just going through that experience, it, it magnified how important this experience really was. You know, once we kind of got into this, you know, even from the first initial conversations, it, like what we kind of came the topic of 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 this doc and, and and the struggles that I faced of, you know, having to short, shorten my height and, and, and the discrimination that I faced, that wasn't even mentioned on the on on the first initial conversations with the team and with ANR and the mm -hmm. director. I, it was really just, hey. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a disabled man and I, I have goals of competing in the Olympic Games. There's been athletes, there's been one athlete that's done it before me and I feel like I can do that. And as we started peeling that onion away yeah. and started to realize the, the, the hurdles and the barriers that I'm, I'm, I'm embarking on in, in real time that we didn't even know we was blindsided of when I would get denied and why was I, why was I denied and the cameras are rolling and this is what I'm finding now in real time. Mm. It kind of put in perspective for me how important this really is. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to just data collection, um, when it comes to just, you know, discrimination to a mm -hmm. certain specific class or, or creed or color. And, and, and really, it just goes into how I am viewed as a disabled man. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it, as I'm fortunate as it is, and, and as, you know, I'm, I'm sure some people walk away and say, well, that wasn't that wasn't fair. Like he shouldn't have been, he should have been able to run. Like that wasn't right. They shouldn't include, you know, more people in the study. Like, but that's the, that's the beautiful part about this doc that I love so much is that it touches on the real parts of life that sometimes life isn't fair. And, right. and, and sometimes it, as hard as you work and, and as hard as you fight, it doesn't go your way. And, right. and, and once that happens, what do you do then? What's 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 going to be your next move? And that's what I love about it so much that it was able to capture that of just my spirit, of just what I've learned and not only going through this battle, but what I've gone through in my life of being born without legs is that sometimes you don't you don't you don't get dealt with the right hand. But through 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 it, through it all, through it all. And regardless, you have the choice of still putting a smile on your face and yeah. you still have the choice of, of, of still smiling and still laughing. And still giving love and energy out there, and you know there was there was moments of of the doc where, and I I loved it. They highlighted my daughter, um, and my daughter Thea, especially at the end, and 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 that was like a huge part of my motivation, you know, yeah. especially during the denials and and during the shortcomings of, I got to keep fighting for my family, I got to keep fighting for the people who who fought for me when I couldn't fight for myself, and and I think it was captured so well through 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 the eighty eight minutes. Um, that I think people are gonna gonna really love it. If they haven't watched, I encourage you to watch it. If you just want to want to find something that that gives you some motivation and inspiration and make you feel good, even though you know it didn't end up the way we wanted to, but the story did. The story was told the way it was supposed to be told. That's that. Yes, it was, and it's beautiful. And speaking of that community with you and Johan, because the the relationship between the both of you started prior to this film being made. So while the film was being made, could you explain how that maybe uh, helped the relationship between the both of you when it came to managing and came to managing the sport for Blake? Uh, you know, I, I, you're talking about just our relationship and the working relationship. Yeah, and if it goes outside of that, definitely expound. Yeah, it, it uh, you know, especially before his girlfriend moved <laughs> to LA, <laughs> then we were we were together four, five, six hours a day, every day, <laughs> and <laughs> you know, both working out and uh, uh, you know, planning everything, uh, doing Instagrams posts you know yeah. trying to come up with some fun funny stuff and things like that uh, but I, I don't know uh, our personal work together you know managing him uh, we we are just uh, work really really well together and uh, you know never argue about anything if he doesn't want to do any product project that I come up with then 
he doesn't want to do it. Simple as that. So I just back off, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do you find, you know, what have you learned from Blake in this experience? Uh, just trying to be happier and mm. work out more because I'm, you know, getting getting older and using excuses and things like that. And, you know, when he doesn't have any ex excuses like that, then, uh, you know, I, I can't make them up. <laughs> you know what? That's actually, I'm in the same boat. I was looking, I was like, <laughs> I have no excuse right now, yeah. <laughs> but that's true. That's real. And the happiness that you talk about, um, I feel, I find one of the things I took away from this was definitely remembering how happy just being physically engaged and active made me. Um, yeah. I think there's power in just being able to move one's own body. And yeah. so, and there's a strength there too. Uh, when it comes to, and you talked about it a little bit before, but one of my questions to you was going to be, what is your source of strength to be able to wake up every day and to fight these hard fights? Yeah, I, I would say my, my source is I get joy of doing things that I was labeled that I wouldn't be able to do. Yeah. Right. I, I get I get joy of knowing that the day that I was born, the doctors told me that I would never walk. And I'm and I'm running all around the world on prosthetic legs. Um, I get joy in you know the the Olympic Committee not understanding and knowing how I could run 44 seconds in the 400 meters, and they think it's the blades, but but I tell people it's 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 my mindset. Yeah. Um, I I get joy in in knowing that that what my why is and and that it's it's bigger than than myself. It's 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 for the disabled individuals that's being discriminated against, that's being told no, that feel less than. And I know that if I can go out there and just run, you know, work as hard as I possibly can on the track, that's my talent, that's been my gifts. And, and if I can go out there and, and, and run one lap around the track as fast as, I as fast as I possibly can, and that puts me in an opportunity and a chance to, to, to spread that joy and that love and, and to give that little ounce of hope, mm -hmm. then that gets me motivated and that gets me excited and that gets me happy again. And I just find joy of just having opportunity, just having a chance to, to, to go run, to have a, just a chance to like to even think about all the hoops and the hurdles and the, and the loops and the five years to even shoot a documentary. You know how many amazing stories that's been untold, that's out here, that's just gone and went, but, the, but, the, but God and the universe has showed me favor and love to find the right people to, to stick it out with me and and to love me enough to believe in me to shoot this like i find joy in that because it could have easily went to the could have went left yeah. when it went right but we're sitting here talking about it at the world premiere and and just i find joy in that and just knowing that i still have chance and and i still have opportunity and knowing that it could be way way worse than the situation i'm in now that 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 brings an extra smile on my face so if you see me smiling it, this is real. This this smile is real. I have and I have my good days and I still have my bad days. Yeah. But I promise you, my 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 good days will always outweigh my bad days. That's beautiful. I'm feeling like the energy already <laughs> the screen, so I love it. And my last question, because honestly, you say so many wise things already, Blake. So it might seem like a redundant question, but if you can come up with something, feel free. And Johan, I would love to get this response from you too. So you guys can figure out who goes first. But what would be like a nice takeaway, words of wisdom wise, that you would like to tell the viewers that are watching this right now? Just a word of wisdom. Here we go. Yeah. Um, we, we talked about it, we was doing, it, doing the, um, the interview on stage. And one of the questions was the, the title with Able. And, and I guess my word of wisdom, which I love the title so much, is, is that you go in thinking, oh, okay, I'm watching this disabled man fight for his dreams. Um, but after you know the, the hour and a half journey that you spend with me in my life, I kind of hope people walk away and said, hmm, what is the word disability? Like, what, is that, what does that mean? And, and I always, I love the phrase and I love the saying that I think this hits it nail on the head. It's like the only true disability in life 
for me is a bad attitude. Mm. And, I, and I felt like I showed up each and every day as best as I possibly could with a good attitude towards my situation as hard as it became. So that's that's my takeaway. I hope people just kind of realize and just say that it's about the mindset. It's about the vision. It's about the dream. It's about the goal. And if you have something in front of you, go fight for it. Just go fight for it. That's that's the gift is being able to fight, not not achieving it, but just being able to, to fight for it. I love that. Thank you. I knew I should have gone first. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> it, it's, <laughs> it's okay, y'all. Just feed from the energy of you. Yeah. <laughs> that, and you've got it. <laughs> it it's one uh, good uh, sentence in, in the in the documentary that his dad always says is. You know, when he's falling down, when he's a kid, he is always comes, get up, get up, get up, get up. And then I think that just sums it up. Just get up and do it. Yeah. We're ready. Yeah. Get up. We're ready. Oh, yeah. Is it there, uh, I'm Einar Thorsteinson. Uh, director producer. I'm um, Anton Anderson, uh, cinematographer and assistant editor. And I'm Brian Leong, one of the another one of the cinematographers as well as a producer on the film Abled. Now, in your own words, could you please describe this documentary? Who wants to take that one? <laughs> well, I guess we met Blake about five years ago and I think it started off as like a small project um, we just found his personality very enticing and uh, we met through his trainer who's also Icelandic we're both Icelandic so we met through Johan Blake's trainer and then you know just started building from there it started as like a small project we ultimately wanted to make it a feature, but we didn't know exactly where it was going to go. So we just focused on Blake's story and his trajectory and followed him. Yes, uh, for myself, from my perspective, I've been uh, sitting in the editor's chair for over 30 years now and uh, as a big fan of sports in general. And, and actually uh, track and field in particular, since it's uh, a passion that I shared with my father from back in the day. I was always waiting for the right uh, opportunity to come my way and get my ass out of that edit chair and uh, explore something new. And uh, uh, one day, my friend Johan walks in there. Johan is a person, per, uh, personal uh, fitness trainer. And he told me about Blake and his story, and I, I found it very intriguing. And there were some bells that went off in my head right away. And <clears throat> my concerns were, first of all, you know, obviously I'm not interested in telling a story from someone that I don't know. And as, as we all know, when it comes to you know, watching TV, I don't care if it's the six o'clock news or the weather guy or drama or sitcom is always about the people. So Johan set up a meeting for us and um, Blake walks in, sits in my edit room. We talk for about 45 minutes or so. And I know it's a cliche to say that, you know, when somebody walks into the room, it lights up, but that was truly the case here. And I was absolutely convinced that uh, this was the story that had to be told. And uh, we shook hands. He walks out of my room, we closed the door, and my first thought was, what the hell did we just do here? <laughs> what did I get myself into? You know, uh, but uh, I, I don't regret it. It's been a long bumpy road, but uh, we're very proud of what we've done here. 
and couldn't be happier to be here at uh, Seattle International. So uh, when this project started, uh, Anar met Blake and introduced us to Blake, and he knew that we, you know, I was already working on some documentary filmmaking, and uh, he brought the story on. And well, we like to argue about sports, so that works out. We also like to argue about film, so that also works out. And then, uh, yeah, we started following Blake and realizing how amazing Blake is as a person, but also as an athlete. And you know, the fact that he was accomplishing things and pushing boundaries was uh, really exciting. Yeah, I would just want to add on to something that Anar said. Like, I think that that hurdle of finding people who are willing to speak on the against side of Blake's case, you know? So it was very difficult to find anybody who wanted to be on film saying that a disabled person shouldn't have the same opportunities as able-bodied people. Even though they may have reasons for that, the culture nowadays is very, it's very, uh, <laughs> Like, it, I guess it's just, it would put you in an uncomfortable and difficult place to like, if you're a public figure, to go out and opinion. say and voice that opinion. So I think as journalists, they would probably, you know, be obligated to at least hear from more op op opposing voices. And it, we were just put in a really difficult position that it was really difficult to find anybody to put their name on something going against Blake. So, I think if you're asking if we're journalists, like, I think, like, we did our best, but I think since we're just storytellers and we don't have a huge corporation behind us or any kind of, like, history, it was really easy to brush us off and, you know, just not want to put your voice out there. So. Yeah, and I think as filmmakers and especially working in documentaries, uh, a major concern is building trust and not betraying trust. And when you get access and when somebody's willing to show like, you know, very personal things to you, you have to take that and understand that this person is putting trust in you. And so, you know, there, there is a large room for abuse, but at the same time, you have to as filmmakers make the active decision of, we are going to do what we can, we're not perfect, we're going to listen, and even during the process we learned things, we're like, we had no idea that was problematic. Oh, okay, let's try to figure this out, or talking to some people and make sure that we're, like, don't tell stories about us without us, and so it was important for us to reach out and, like, you know, really engage with other people in the community, not necessarily just athletes, but also people who are on the other side of the disability community, and I think fundamentally our ethical choices were the story for all of us is very, very important, but how can we tell the story in a way that all of us are proud of, but at the same time not compromising who we want to be as people.